If you clicked on this video, there's a pretty good chance you're excited for House of the Dragon, or at the very least curious. Fortunately, and depending on when you watch this, we've only got a day left or it's already out. Regardless of where you are in the series, you may be watching this retrospectively in the future, this video is going to focus on the standards I believe audiences should hold House of the Dragon to. Now to be clear, this video isn't a promise of what we'll definitely get, but what I think the series should give us for it to be successful. And I'm very optimistic and I believe we will have a stellar series to look forward to here. Now without further ado, this is three things we should expect from House of the Dragon. Coming at number three is a great pace. To elaborate on that point, I know there's going to be some time jumping and I think that should better contextualize the background without hammering us with unnatural exposition. From what I've seen and what I understand, the time jumps are done very well and shouldn't lose anyone or push audiences out of the illusion of story. Now due to the limited source material, rushing through it should not be an issue and we should feel confident that physical travel will not be done like it was in later seasons in Game of Thrones. I'm really looking at like Gendry running back to the wall to send a raven to Dragonstone and have Daenerys arrive beyond the wall a few minutes later. Yeah, that shouldn't ever happen here in House of the Dragon. At least it better not. Now, Fire and Blood, the source material, isn't a short book by any means, but the dance really only takes up about one third of the book. So there's plenty of room to expand and take their time with character development, and some of those more slow burn kinds of plots should have far more depth. Now, I don't think it will be rushed, but I don't think the opposite will be true either from what I can discover about season one. At no point does the story lend itself to feeling like it is dragging or is taking too long to get to the point. The second expectation we should have is visually superior to Game of Thrones. If you've seen trailers, one thing I think that we should expect is not only more distinguished appearances from the dragons, but also I think it's fair to expect more character out of the dragons. What are their different attributes and limitations? My hope is not to be told so much as we can visibly experience the difference in how they fly and the speed of which they can move. Visually, Game of Thrones didn't really offer too much of a difference there between the three dragons other than color. Now, Caraxes already looks to be an indication of how they're going to present these dragons to us visually a lot better and in a way that communicates their character traits. Another area, visually, Miguel Sapochnik in Game of Thrones really did a great job in those larger action sequences, but what made those so impressive is how he went about atmosphere. One thing House of the Dragon should be able to establish is a visual tone that will almost guide the series like a film. Now think of Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy or even the new Matt Reeves Batman movie. Gotham City, visually as a backdrop, was almost a character with a distinct tone. Between King's Landing and Dragonstone, as well as other settings, Look for them to put more personality into the cinematography. Just for reference, the DP from a few of Miguel's Emmy-nominated episodes is working on House of the Dragon as well, if that's any indication. And if you've already seen trailers, even just council meetings appear heavier in tone, just in the way that they're filmed and presented to us visually. And the main expectation I think we should have going into this is for the show to earn its moments. Whether it's a huge dragon fight or an argument among the small council, as an audience, we should expect parallels between the two. And this sort of circles back to pacing, but one thing Game of Thrones did great at was establishing real consequence to every action in the earlier seasons. Good drama can take a scene that's just a few kids fighting and make it feel as weighted as a dragon fight because the consequences can be just as grave. Think back to Tywin sending Joffrey to bed in season three of Game of Thrones. That scene had audiences on the edge of their seat as much if not maybe more than like say the battle on Blackwater Bay. Well, how did they do that? They made it clear early on no character is truly safe and any action will have a equivalent reaction. That is a big reason why plot armor hurt the later season so much. If you read Fire and Blood, you know and you should expect that the same environment should present itself in House of the Dragon. Another thing, and we touch on visual tone being important in storytelling, but connecting our character arcs to the overarching plot is something House of the Dragon must deliver. And it's really up to the showrunners here to do this. There's not much characterization in Fire and Blood, and there's no POV chapters either. What will be nice to see is who are these characters emotionally when we first meet them, and what is their trajectory as they grow throughout the series. 
Even for book readers, we only have the actions that characters took, but we don't know the self-reflection or internalized motives exactly. So in season one, as we begin to meet these characters and develop attachments, a storyteller owes their audience and the characters themselves to remain consistent with that character arc. And with the appropriate time to pace these characters out, it would be disappointing to throw away a character arc in the name of subverting expectations, because you can subvert expectations without betraying a character's established identities. For many, Game of Thrones was unsuccessful at that and fear this show may be more of the same. For the record, I do not believe that. I think House of the Dragon should be able to do this better than Game of Thrones. Look, this video is me stating what at bare minimum will make this TV series deserving of our time. I don't know if anything will eclipse the first four seasons of Game of Thrones, but if House of the Dragon can meet these reasonable expectations, I think it gives itself an opportunity to be overall from start to finish a more satisfying show.